Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so excited to be here with you guys today. I have a very special guest. Milana Schaefer is joining me today to share a little bit about her story, her walk uh, through divorcing a narcissist with children and also finding Jesus along the way. This has got to be one of my most favorite stories from being a coach, and I just can't wait for you guys to hear Milana's story as well. So Milana, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Angel, thanks for having me. I am so excited. I know this is gonna be such a blessing to my viewers. So I guess there's just so much to talk about, but let's just kind of start about your personal life before we get um, too far into talking about what led you to getting into divorce and how you managed that with your children and all of that. Um, I think it's really interesting your your backstory. If you don't mind just sharing a little bit with the viewers about your story and w how you got to the U.S. and all of that. Okay. Yeah. So I was born in Russia and I came here in 1992. So I was eight. Um, I came here as a Jewish refugee. So at the time, as you know, communism ended in Russia. And so the United States and Israel came together and started pulling Jews out of Russia. Um, due to the anti-Semitism there. I was really little, so I didn't really feel it that much, but um, that's what was happening. So we moved here to Chicago when I was eight, and I, my parents didn't know anything about being Jewish. In Russia, you weren't really allowed to practice your faith, so they didn't know. So they, they just brought me here, and... Um, I, I guess I, I went to Jewish camp, I went to a Jewish school, and that's kind of how I learned about the holidays, but I didn't really connect to it either. Um, it was never practiced at my home. So I just grew up like an American girl. Um, my parents worked a lot, and they were gone most of the time. And so I think that was pretty traumatic, but I didn't really know anything about like what was normal, what wasn't. I was just excited to be in America. I was excited to for all the opportunities. I just wanted to be like an all-American girl. And uh, so then I met my, I went to college and um, there I met my ex-husband um, and we got married really fast. I got pregnant and got married pretty quickly. There's yeah. always issues. Yeah. Sorry. Well, actually, I think, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point to bring up is kind of the way that you, your, your backstory, you know, I always tell people, I know lots of people want to go back to before they met the narcissist, but the truth is that version of you still would have chosen the narcissist. It's important to actually go back further than that and really heal the wounds that you had leading up to how, however you got connected to the narcissist. And in your situation, you know, there was a lot of moving parts. And while you ha were so grateful for the opportunities, you know, being here would afford you it was also, I can't help but, but think that there was also still some uh, lack of security there and just wanting to find a place of belonging and, uh, and wanting to, you know, start, start a family with, with somebody that you could kind of build a belonging uh, structure with, which is very common for lots of people, you know, even if they're not immigrants to, to another country at all. That's exactly right. I um, There was a lot of trauma from my past through just negligence. My parents came here and they, they came with $400. And so they went straight to work. My mom was a doctor in Russia, but here she became a cleaning lady. And my dad was a, like a architect and, he, and here he became the um, janitor from the department building we lived in. So they were working all the time and I was probably in second grade and just left at home by myself. Um, 
and I didn't realize that was traumatic until a lot later. Um, so I started healing from abuse from my ex. And so you guys get married, you get pregnant, and were thing how were things in the home at this point? Were they normal and acceptable, or were there already red flags about what the behavior? Yeah. So we um, actually got pregnant before we got married. Um, uh, yeah, there was always issues. I didn't know he was my first everything. He was my first relationship, uh, everything. So um, there was a lot of negligence and that was normal for me, but um, so it wasn't like physical abuse, but just emotionally absent like physically absent um so that's kind of the kind that's the kind of red flags that i received lots of drinking and drug yeah. use um so all of those things that i just completely ignored because i was so excited that i was in a relationship and um, yeah he was a cute guy and we were having fun and i was I literally met him on my 21st birthday, so... Oh, wow. Yes. And and speaking of that, actually, that's a really good point to bring up, which is that, you know, a lot of people are drawn to the narcissist because of their, you know, persona, right? They ha they're have super fun, they're outgoing, and in your situation, your ex is in a band or was in a band. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like, oh, this this person is, you know, has their life together and look at this incredible lifestyle that they live. It's attractive, right? And especially yeah. when you're 21. Yes, I just really was so excited to be dating this cute guy in the band and I don't know, all the friendships that came with it and yeah, the fun times. Yes. So, and so you end up having two more children after your first one. When was it really to the point where you were like, something is really wrong? Not just like every marriage has ups and downs. Every relationship will have ups and downs for you. Really? What was the thing that was like, this is, this is no longer acceptable for me or for my children to live in anymore. How did you get to that point? Oh, there were so many issues. We've never even had like a honeymoon phase. I don't know. We, My parents fought a lot. And I think being neglected as a child, I didn't even realize that those things were problems until 2018 is really when I started Googling things like silent treatment and like withdrawal like what do you do when somebody doesn't talk to you doesn't come home like just started googling all of those different kind of things and that's when your channel came up and also just all of the numerous narcissism type youtube channels you know it's when you're doing when you're making a YouTube video like we're making right now, you know, you just never know who you're going to be impacting. And you always hope it's going to be somebody who's in your situation who just wants to make sense of what's happening and kind of start headed in the right direction of unpacking everything that's happening to them, you know, and that it's not going to be somebody who's trying to get your information to further abuse someone, which unfortunately, you know, does happen because, uh, because narcissists do learn and they get better and better at knowing your specific triggers, whatever victim they have, their specific triggers, but also how to just become better at their craft of manipulating people in general. And so you, you start finding some information about narcissism. Yeah. What, what was, we had several sessions together one-on-one -on -one sessions um what was what was it that where were you in the process when we had our first session why that time why at that place what had occurred prior to that happening you know you start gathering the information then what do you do with it right because that's always the more difficult thing 
once you find out what you are dealing with, it's now the burden of responsibility on you to really admit, right, and acknowledge, okay, this is what I'm experiencing. Yeah, so in 2018, I I discovered your YouTube channel and I started listening and I was like, oh yeah, that, that sounds like me. And, oh yeah, that sounds like stuff I'm going through. But then there was one thing that you said that was like, well, narcissism don't, like it doesn't get better. It's only gonna get worse. And I'm like, okay, that's not me. That's not my narcissism. <laughs> I turned it off. Um, and, you know, there was maybe some love bombing then and we got back to a good place. And so I kind of sh- like shut all that down thinking, okay, that's, she doesn't know my story. Um, so, so then some time went by and things of course got bad again, the devalued, the discard. And I was like, okay, I need to kind of start, like, maybe I will, um, like book an appointment with you just to tell you my personal story and, and now get some more concrete advice based on like what's going on with me not just like your the YouTube channels were good and helpful, but I felt like now I need some specific help. And so yeah. that's when I booked our first session. You know, um, something that you mentioned, which is um, th- that I just kind of want to touch on before we continue this line is the love bombing phase doesn't always look the same. What what people think love bombing is, is not always how it looks in their specific situation, right? So a lot of people think it's, it's only over the top gifts and praise and this and this and this, but that is just simply not the case. The narcissist is going to do whatever least amount of effort is required of them right and so if you if you've never had like because you just mentioned that you never really had a honeymoon phase when that happens the love bombing phase can be as something as simple as just not devaluing right not discarding and so it doesn't have to be this over the top exaggeration of you know gifts and praise and affection and all of this stuff that comes to mind when we think about love bombing. It's whatever the lowest amount of whatever you're going to accept from the narcissist is going to be. And in some case, that's just right. In some cases, that's just not being outright rude. (laughs) And that's the love bombing phase. Like being home, doing Mm. the dishes. (laughs) Exactly. That's exactly right. And exactly. I uh, actually just did a video on the on this channel i think and i talked about like this can be as simple as just going to go get the mail right like oh you went and picked up the mail amazing like you walked down the driveway and you got the mail but that's what happens when somebody is truly in a trauma bonded situation and you know for me personally this is why it's so important that people truly know what a narcissist is because this is not just someone who's self-involved and loves selfies this is somebody who is Mm -hmm. truly devaluing and degrading a person to the place where they have no semblance of what their true identity is what they like what they don't like they have no idea what these things are anymore for them and it's truly ruining lives it's ruining families this is it's so dangerous we have to uh uh, we have to change the perception as, as an overall society about what a narcissist is what they're capable of and really what it feels like if you don't understand what it's like to be in this confusion of how could I be married to somebody, but I, I I want them to be like this, but then they're showing me this. If you don't understand what it's like to have this back and forth, it's really hard to explain to people and to find a community of people who really understand you. Exactly. Like my abuse was never physical. He never hit me. In fact, he never even yelled at me or put me down. It looked like for me, he was gone all the time. He was drinking. Sometimes he didn't come home at all. Um, so he claimed to be a Christian and I was not. So then he would say, well, the reason you're upset with me is because you're not a Christian. And that is why our marriage is so wrong. It's because if you were a Christian, you we would be great, but you're expecting me to be your God and I'm not your God. And then he like, I look up at the bank account and some of our money would be gone and he'd be like, oh, I tithe the money and you're, you're not a Christian. So you wouldn't understand tithing. Like he would just 
like put a lot of spiritual abuse on me and I didn't know I wasn't a Christian at the time so I didn't know maybe he was right maybe he was wrong I don't know it just felt wrong and then when I would get upset he would silent treatment and stonewall for months like a long time and completely check out and then when I was finally like okay we're done then he would come back and talk and act sweet and maybe take me out to eat, do the dishes, I don't know, do some yard work. And I thought, okay, this is who he is. This is who I fell in love with. And I thought that was who he was and all his unhealthy parts were just things that could be healed over time. But it turned out that those things increased. When you were going through this, did you feel like if I do this more, if I understand this more, if I try this one thing, and if I do this other thing, did you do all of the things? All the things. I read every single book on relationships and marriage, um, how to be a better wife, love and respect. And, um, you know, he, so I cleaned the house more. I quit my job to be a stay at home mom. I just, mm. I did all the things just to yeah. try. And I mean, I did that as a child, you know, for my parents. And so it felt very normal and, I, and it never worked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think, I think that's so important to point out the fact that you can now identify, hey, I was doing that because that's what I did as a child. And even though I didn't have success even as a child doing those things, it's what feels most normal. It's your natural baseline, right? It, my natural yeah. baseline is trying to earn and prove and work to get something and let to help somebody see my perspective if i just do yeah. one more thing they'll see me if they if i just provide one more you know aspect of this relationship to them they'll recognize what a treasure they have in me and yeah i was always the first one that's like let's talk about this let's let's solve this i was i was the one that begged i would follow him around the house begging him to talk to me and just everything i tried everything <laughs> absolutely and i think you know you you had mentioned um you know you were looking at all of the youtube stuff and then finally you're like i need help with my specific situation every everybody's situation truly is different there will be aspects that are the same no matter what you're experiencing with a narcissist but it will be different based on your narcissist based on your specific situation and um and for you, you know, trying to make the first move, trying to, you know, get, get his attention, he was he was learning how to do the things to you that were, you know, not um, that were that were hitting your triggers, right? That were creating this deeper trauma bond with him. That were creating this further dependence upon him. So I think it's just really important that everybody recognizes. It doesn't look the same for everybody. Sometimes, you know, it, that that could be what it looks like for you in your desperation. For other people, they're, you know, getting angry and they're trying to, they're shouting, they're throwing things, they're trying to get somebody to pay attention to them. You know, this is called crazy making, regardless of what it looks like. Oh, I the, hate all those. And I belittled and I screamed. And that is exactly what kept me coming back because I'm like, well, I do wrong things. I lose it. I'm not perfect. And so I'm going to forgive because he forgives me. And literally that's what kept me in this relationship for so long is because I would overreact every huh. time. You know, again, very, 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 very common. It's because you're so used to um, thinking that you're the problem. And so it's like, if I hadn't done that, or if I had done this, then things would be different. Let's try again, you know? Yeah. And he forgives me. That's another yeah. very common one where it's like, he is likely hoping that you mess up so that he can use it against you as another form of abuse, hold something else over your head, and yeah. use it as justification for behavior like not coming home, you know, ignoring you. Um, yeah. all of, uh, you know, that's emotional abandonment. That's, yeah. that, that is, that is absolutely a form of abuse. And, you know, that, that is so common with people is that they think 
okay, I, I did a bad behavior because they know, you know, this didn't feel authentic to me. This didn't feel good. Even if I'm upset, it didn't feel right that I did X, Y, and Z. And so let me just try again. And then, yeah. you know, because they're still looking at yourself as the problem instead of right. seeing that, hey, this person is toxic. They know what they're doing and they don't want to change because it's hard to believe someone you love is going to hurt you on purpose like that. I know, exactly. It's not something that my brain even thinks about. Mm -hmm. So I looked at him like I'm thinking, you know, so I feel apologetic. I feel bad and guilty. So he must also feel that way. But that wasn't the case. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's one of the very first things is to recognize you guys are not seeing the same perspective. You are not thinking the same way, you know, and it can be really hard to come to terms with that, especially if they've been saying all the right things. It's like, but they said this and then they did this and then we're married and, you know, and he's a Christian. And how could it be possible that this is, you know, that he's this way and, and, and not really how I imagine he could be or, or should be, right? Yeah. And so for you, you're how how it's truly miraculous, you know, that you even ended up being open to Christianity when someone who's a Christian is treating you this way, right? <laughs> I wasn't a Christian for a long time. I was like, I want nothing to do with this. If this is Christianity, this is not for me. Uh, and um, so, yeah, then one day I looked at him and I just started like seeing darkness like a film of darkness over him and the people like in his band that he was hanging out with I couldn't put my word on it like I didn't know what it was but it was so scary to me it felt like it was beyond what I could fix at that point like I finally felt very helpless and weak like before I thought, well, maybe if I read this book, they'll get better. Maybe if we go to church, they'll get better. Maybe if I write them a letter, do this and this. And I finally like saw like this darkness is beyond what I just can. It was scary. It, I've never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's also su super important that people understand this is a spirit. I'm unapologetic about this channel being faith-based, about all of my work being faith-based, because if you only have knowledge in the natural realm, it will not help you break free. It will not help you truly recover from the spiritual abuse that you're, you're experiencing and being tethered to not just that person it is a spirit so you will leave the person you can you can get free of that person and not free of the spirit um and so i i really thank you for sharing that because it's so true this is a this is a demonic influence that you cannot reason with there is not another thing and in fact it's it's the demonic that wants you to try to keep earning and doing and striving and working and it's never going to be enough because that again this spirit is unsatisfied with any with any level of work that you could possibly do that's exactly it and that is why i found your youtube channel so amazing so that day when i started seeing the darkness it was so scary to me i literally fell on my knees i didn't know what to do with myself like i just started crying like okay you know this is beyond my human capacity at this point like i give up and that's i guess when god took over and that's when i found your channel and that's when you started talking about how this is in the spirit and it's a spiritual thing and so everything i was able to see already was like you were explaining it to me in words in, in those videos just amazing really i i love <laughs> i love that <laughs> it's coming I, I truly do love that it's coming through the YouTube channel and, you know, God will just meet you where you are. You know, it's it's one of those things where you don't have to earn it. It will be in such stark contrast to everything that you've just been trying to do and, and knowing how to do. And like, there's nothing that you wouldn't do. And yet his way of of having relationship is nothing like that. 
right? It's nothing that you can earn. It's nothing that you need to do. He accepts you just as you are and will meet you wherever you are. Exactly. I suddenly heard, now I'm here and now I'm going to help you. (laughs) Wow. Incredible. And so from that point, what happened? So then I continued listening to your channel. And like I said, I kept shutting it in off. When there was a love bombing and things kind of returned back to normal, I would kind of close your, your channel a little bit. Like <laughs> she doesn't know my narcissist. <laughs> my <laughs> instead of change. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and I have had that said to me nearly every single time that somebody still is like, I'm just not fully convinced. You know, I like have like a sliver of hope and I really want it to be like 99% chance that this one's going to. Yeah. I had one client, Chrissy, actually, she was on my channel as well this year. And she had me nearly convinced everybody else. I, I've been like, no, you know, but she. <laughs> she was so convincing to me. I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm open to it. You know, maybe he can change. I don't know. Um, but everybody else have been like, no, that I can tell that that spirit is too strong. in that one, (laughs) that one is not going to change. Um, and, but I think that's really important for people to understand where it's like healing, even coming to the point of, Um, of accepting or acknowledging what's happening is a process and it's not something that typically happens for people where it's like all of a sudden okay this is what I'm dealing with and this is what I'm gonna do and then they never back down from their plan and just move forward I've in fact I don't think I've ever seen that happen ever so even um, coming back and forth and you know thinking maybe things will change okay maybe now they're getting worse maybe I need help um, is, is so normal. And I think it's really important for people to have grace with themselves if that's what they find themselves doing even at this moment. <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe you're hoping that this story has a different ending. Um, but regardless, you know, the this is uh, Milana's story and we're just sharing it to help people uh, wherever you're at get freedom. You know, whatever that looks like for you today, just that one mm-hmm. step because they all add up. They, all of the, everything that you do adds up and it builds momentum for your journey. Exactly. So then I started listening to your channel again. And some of the first like beginning videos you have were like breaking the trauma, Ron, breaking the soul tie. And I was like, okay, we'll just start there. <laughs> I remember I used to clean my daughter's dance studio and I would just mop and I would repeat what you would say like in those videos and I'm like I don't know if it's gonna work but I'm just gonna start there and so I did those wow. videos David for a long time <laughs> I love that Milana's referring to a I have a declarations yes. playlist on my YouTube channel still up you can go look at that and um And yeah, exactly. I think it's just, you know, again, there's so many layers to this. It first starts in the spirit. And if you can just get your spirit to resonate with what truth sounds like again, what hope, true hope, not this false hope of I could do one more thing. I could read one more book. I could go to one more therapist appointment, you know, but true hope, what that really feels like. And you start just resonating it and start feeding your spirit that's been starved for so long for truth and love and acceptance and hope, real hope. So I love that you were able to do that. Um, So keep going with your story. I'm interested (laughs) to hear how, how listening like a little bit, you know, coming back and forth and how is this all adding up into your story? So the whole thing about soul ties and trauma bonds was really interesting to me. I started realizing that like I was attached to him so much deeper. And so as I started doing those declaration videos, I think that really helped me kind of detach and realize, okay, this isn't right. And so then I started setting boundaries. So I wasn't even ready to divorce or leave. I was just like, okay, I'm gonna start with this boundary. We fight all the time over finances. We can never figure out how to get on budget. Every time I would just say, hey, let's set a budget. It would create a huge fight or he would leave. 
you know, I started looking at the bank records and realizing how much money he was spending on alcohol and just things. And so then I was like, okay, boundary number one, we are fighting over money. So today we're going to separate our finances. I'll have my money, you'll have your money, and you pay for this, I'll pay for this. And then we don't ever have to fight about it, talk about it ever again. And that was huge because I used to, I did our, our finances together for 10 years at that time. So that was number one, just splitting up the finances. And that's a really big step. You know, a lot of people do not, it's in fact, it's so prevalent. I've added a section on financial rehabilitation inside my intensive because a, a lot of people just have enmeshed everything where there's literally nothing that is yours. There's nothing that is yours. You don't have control or say over so much of your life. And and, and so starting with something that's such a huge deal of finances and recognizing, uh, you know, this is the cause of most of our fights, I'm going to stop having these fights by exactly. doing this thing, right? Yeah. I didn't want to fight anymore. So mm -hmm. I, for me, it was like, okay, we fight over money. Let's stop putting our money together. We fight at night. Now, I knew it was because he was drinking, but... I'm also not a night person, so I'm like, okay, let's just not hang out at night. We always end up fighting, so I'll just go to sleep early, do your own thing, and then we stopped hanging out at night, you know? We went on a hike once, and he was, like, walking ahead of me, completely ignoring me. It was awful, so I said, we can't be hiking anymore because this isn't fun. So I just kept setting more and more boundaries. We used to go see concerts together, but then he would get really drunk and we would fight so no more concerts so i wasn't breaking up with him but just setting these boundaries of every time we do these things and i feel like bad or we're fighting then we're not going to do those things anymore wow i mean these are all really big steps especially for somebody to take just like, let me just try to keep eliminating what I think is the problem, right? Yeah. And the more that you did that, you probably were seeing, like, I've eliminated all these things, and yet we're still having fights, right? Yeah, and he didn't care. He didn't. I was like, okay, I'll just go out at night without you, and I'll just keep drinking. And so it wasn't even more fights. It was just like we were slowly like being detached, like he made his own friends, I made my own friends, and we just weren't even like seeing each other anymore. And I think that really, he didn't like that. And so he started leaving more and hanging out with other girls. And so, so he actually like started, I don't know, like saying, well, I don't care and did his own thing yeah that's that actually makes a lot of sense because narcissists hate boundaries and so when they yeah. feel they have to have complete control and so when they ever whenever they start losing control they start shifting the direction that they're headed in oh i was gonna head over here you know what i don't care i don't want to head that direction anymore i want to go over here and so they start yeah. making new rules you know for themselves and that will often be more overt destructive behavior so things like you're talking about where he just didn't care anymore he would be overt about going out at night he would not even go through all of the steps necessary to hide the fact that he was with other women and things yeah. like that right yeah he would act he would actually bring him to our house <laughs> like he just unbelievable yeah. really unacceptable yeah he you know i i went out for one night now i'll go out for two nights you know i used to do this and now i just won't do it at all so he got even worse than how he was yeah violent treatments mm. you know and for you, what were you thinking about when all of this was happening? Was this at the point when you started to think, I might need to divorce this person? No. Okay. <laughs> I just kept setting more and more boundaries. Uh, wow. 
okay, now at this point, I'm going to have to kind of detach. I'm not divorcing. I just need to get healthy. I'm done reacting. I'm done mm. spending my energy worrying and like. So good. That's actually. Things, so I just kept detaching. Yeah. And you, you, you instead you put that energy into what you needed right and yes. it's trying to figure out what do i need in order to be a healthy person and stopped worrying about what the narcissist was doing exactly right I, mm -hmm. we started joining a church and i made really good friends at that time that helped me like walk through this and you know just working more getting my photography business up just focusing on myself learning how to not be reactive and because that's my struggle too is yelling and reacting so i know like you always said no matter what they're doing you have to be like consistent so i was just working on those things and he just kept getting worse and eventually he actually filed for divorce yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So in your situation, he just couldn't deal with it anymore because he wasn't able to manipulate you any longer. The right. more things that he was doing, you weren't giving him the energy that he desired, that he required in order to stay in the relationship. And so he was like, you know what? I want to leave, right? He met a new supply. I mean, he was still living here. Yep. So this was April 2021 when I kind of just said, hey i need to take some time alone i just need to heal and i'm not showing up right so as i started doing that he went out more he met new people and eventually he met a new person and that whole year he still lived in the house and he was dating her and then he filed for divorce in like september 2021 he was still living here and so he, he was just gone all the time, but he would come home to sleep in the basement. And so he just, he met a new supply and then, and then he was kind of checked, checked out. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's really important for people to understand the narcissistic abuse cycle means that whatever cycle you're in, the narcissist already has somebody. They, they cannot, literally cannot be without a supply. And that's mm -hmm. something so important for people to understand is that if you are not the supply, so if you are not in the love bombing stage, there is a supply. That it's just so important for people to, to recognize that just because you don't want it to be true doesn't mean that the, the things still aren't happening, right? Because that's a fact of how narcissists operate. They have to have a constant uh, supply source. Um, and so it's remarkable really that all of this is going on and you're just getting healthier and healthier. Meanwhile, this like chaos is going on on the outside world, right? Exactly. It's to me such a testimony of that. Listen, if you really want to become the, a version of yourself that you're happy with, that you're proud of, that shows up correctly for your children, that's breaking generational curses and trauma off of them, you can do it. It does not matter. It, you are, your life is not dependent on on the narcissist your quality of life is not dependent upon them if you want it you can have it right this second not in a year when they move out or not in two years when the divorce is finalized or not in 10 years when your kids are 18 it can happen right this second and you're you're proof of that yeah i started praying a lot i'm not i wasn't a christian so i was just like ah, if you're out there yeah out, please and i went to church and just I was just in prayer all the time and I got visions um I got visions from the Lord like this is going to be really hard going to cheat on you things are going to get much worse he kind of gave me this vision that I had cancer like a spiritual cancer and that he was going to be like my chemo like bad things a bunch of you know chemo takes not only cancer away but it'll take good things away too so i lost friends and i lost like a lot of good things but also like i had all these visions of like this is gonna get really bad but it's you're gonna have abundance after so i just yeah. stuck to that vision 
like a lot through that hard time. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's so common. Um, but I always tell people that's really a blessing because people that you're in connection to or in relationship with resonate with an unhealed version of you. You yeah. have, you know, the the more whole you get, the more ty- different type of person, more healed type of person you're supposed to be connected to. And so while it's painful, it literally is walking away from one life and into another life. It's the life, you know, the life you want is going to cost you the life you have now. It's true. Um, exactly. He, things got so much worse. He would turn our heat off, our electric off. He would lock us out of the house. He would come home like super intoxicated. So things got really scary, but because God told me this was gonna happen, I just didn't react. I didn't talk back, I just, stayed in my room and prayed, listened to worship music, went to church. I just stuck on the path, no matter what he was doing. He he would send me flowers out of nowhere. Like, like I wouldn't react to that either. I just decided no matter what he was going to do, I will never respond to him ever mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so, that's so powerful because when you finally – realize how much control and how much authority you actually have in the relationship because it can always seem like you know if they do this then I have to do that but it's just not true because once you start just reclaiming ground and reclaiming ground you're gonna see how much the narcissist will try like this guy was never doing any of that now he's like okay I'll send you flowers and and that doesn't work okay I'll lock you out of the out of the house with, with, with your children yes um and so, you know, these extremes were happening and that you were just so steady, so unmoved. It's, um, it's, it's really remarkable, honestly. And, and, and that God gave you that vision. You know, I tell people all of the time, the easiest way to get through this, because it's going to be hard no matter what. But if you have a word of the Lord, you you can stand on that no matter what happens. And you'll just know that this thing cannot come back to me void. It will come back to me fully fulfilled. And I'm not moving because of what this person is trying to do. And ultimately what this spirit is trying to rob me and my children, my future of. Right. And so it's so important. I think. I think it's impossible, nearly impossible, if you don't have a word of the Lord, because it's always good. You're going to be wondering what's going to happen. You know, how, is this all going to be worth it? Or is it just easier for me to live out my days trying to, you know, manage what's going on inside my house? That's exactly it. Because I would just go back because of those flowers or try to work it out. But I got the word from the Lord no more. And I was like, well, maybe I want to go back. Maybe I'm feeling lonely. Maybe I'm feeling insecure. But God said no more. So I'm just sticking with that word. (laughs) Just going to stick with that. And in the past, I would always go back because it was out of my flesh and my fears of being alone or divorced. And this time, I heard that word so clearly. Nothing was going to change because I was like, well, God said no more. Sorry. Like, God said no. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Amazing. Really. So during this process, you're going to church. Are you taking your children to that church as well? Yeah. Yeah. And when was it for you that you were like, okay, I'm going to commit. I'm going to, you know, get baptized. I'm going to make this official and I'm going to change. Well, it's just a slow progress of like, okay, I'm a Christian, I believe this, I hear God, and then bad things are happening all around me. So all I can do is like, okay, we're going to church. We're going to stay here and we're just going to pray. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and it's just a, just like the slow progress of leaving him. It was the same of coming to God. It was just little bits like we're just gonna go to church we're just gonna pray we're just gonna do a devotional we're just gonna listen to worship music we're just gonna leave it on at the house all day you know and and i just saw so much fruit from that 
the people that came into my life, that, you know, all the blessings that happened. I didn't get baptized yet. Are you still going to that same church? Yes, I am. I, I desire to get baptized. I just don't want to do it in like a horse trough. I want to. Okay. <laughs> you, you want to go to like a lake or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want it to be really special. And yeah, I just haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Well, that's so that's so amazing. Um, you know, in the when I invite people to come to my channel, I just ask them, what are some things you would like to talk about? Or what do you want people to know? And one of the things that I love about what you said to me, you said, uh, you said in there that you ultimately want people to know how the narcissist saved you, right? From yeah. being, from having this kind of life where you were, you would have just accepted whatever the narcissist gave you, whether that was, you know, crumbs for affection or, you know, abuse, straight out abuse. Um, and you would have just accepted it. But now, you know, he's given you so much. He actually gave you freedom. He gave you a relationship with Jesus and led you out of all of the things that you were experiencing. Yeah, like, and your channel helped. Like, this is not from the Lord. This is not what God wants for you. You have yeah. identity, you have purpose, mm. and this is not from God. And I started listening to that. I started changing my life. Like, what would it look like to have got, like life that the Lord would want for me, you know? And so I started changing. These are not the people he would want me to hang out with. And so I was alone for a long time, but then he brought new people to me and he wouldn't want me to spend my time yelling and screaming and being hurt and upset and devalued. So I left that situation. So just, so it's just the, like thinking about and like what, why God created me, you know? I didn't know any of those things. I didn't grow up thinking I had a purpose and identity and that God created me for like a reason. I never, those words came from your channel. So that's, I needed to hear that. Mm -hmm. And God filled the rest. Yes, exactly right. And I just feel like that for people who are watching this even right now, you know, you were created for purpose. It truly, um, you know, it breaks my heart when I think about uh, how, how people view God, you know, if they don't have a real relationship with him, because especially if somebody is trying to portray that they know him and it's, you know, that version of God if he was a person would be in jail because he's sending people cancer. He's sending people terrible relationships and then expecting them to stay in it. That's just not who he is, you know, and it, it like, real, real, it's really like, you know, he's so good. You, I wish people could know the real one. And, um, and really he, he has nothing but good plans for you. Good thoughts about you. And that's true of every single person, just like you would never, you know, want something less than perfect for your kids. That's how he feels right. about each one of us. And every single one of us were created on purpose, for purpose, from love, for love. And and even people watching now, like wondering if that is for you. It absolutely is. You have purpose and a life and identity and uh, all the capabilities that you need to have that, you already have them now. You know, that is still for you. It's not too late. I think that's something that a lot of people yeah. struggle with too, right? Which is like, I've already invested X amount of years in this thing. I want it to work. I don't want to start over or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, my kids joined a theater group at that time, and it's a Christian theater group. We actually started because we wanted to just be a theater. We didn't even know it was a Christian group. And in there, they tell they teach the children like, you have your gifts to glorify the Lord. We're not just here on stage to get our own glory, to get our own recognition. We're here like a moon, like the sky, the sun shines the light on the moon and then the moon gives out the light. So you're on stage to shine 
God on the audience, that you guys have a purpose and this is your talent, not to get your own pride and glory, but to give it to God. And that's how they taught him. And I saw how different that was from how he played his music, which was all about how much attention he was getting, how many likes he was getting, you know, if, if not a lot of people came to the show, it would completely destroy him. If a lot of people came to the show, he was in this huge high. And they're teaching these kids the complete opposite. It's not about how many people come. It's how you're going to affect the ones that did and how you're going to bring them to God. And, and, and that even that changed my mind about so many things. So God brought you, ch church, theater, these other friends it was a lot of things once i was able to be humble enough to say i can't fix this this is outside of my own my flesh there's nothing i could read there's nothing i could say this is this is yours god like i'm, I'm bringing it to you then he took over and provided me all these resources to help you mm. move forward that's incredible really First of all, I love that about the kids, um, you know, teaching children about who they are truly from from the time that they're little, then they grow up knowing how they should be treated. They know how they should treat others. They know why they've been gifted, why they've been blessed and what you've been talking about with uh, with the contrast of of your ex on stage. You know, that's very common with even even. Um, people in the church, like worship leaders, a lot of people are like, how could they be a narcissist? It's because they're t trying to take the worship for themselves. You know, they they love spending time with themselves. They love right. anything that's going to promote themselves. And it never, that th you know, true worship will lead you further into the Father's heart. And, and fake worship will lead you closer to whatever person is trying to promote the worship, right? Oh, yeah. My, my ex was a like in the worship team at the church. That oh, wow. At that time. Uh huh. And I remember him talking about how he feels good to be on stage. And finally, he'll get to show the church how good he is with music. <laughs> that is absolutely atrocious, really. Yeah. Um, you know, that's God's platform. But and I didn't know any better, you mm -hmm. know. Absolutely. Like, oh, for sure. Oh, so we're going to church. My husband's in the worship team. Like, he must be a great Christian. Like, I didn't know. So God had to take over. And it was only when I was able to say, I can't do it anymore on my own. I can't change. And I didn't even want to divorce then. I just was like, God, come and take over this and, and help us, whatever it looks like. Yeah, I think that's so important is where is getting to whatever place where you're like, whatever the outcome is, I'm OK with it as long as you bring it right, yeah. which it's not pushing one agenda or the other. It's just saying, like, I, I, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what the right answer is or what the right outcome is. I just need help. I, I can't keep doing it. And right. that can be so hard because it, it can feel like I'm failing, which is another very common um thing that people will feel like oh my marriage failed and i have a whole video where i talk about that you know what we call a failure is not how god calls a failure and you're only you're putting an unnecessary burden on yourself if you are trying to say to yourself that that, that your marriage failed or that you failed in you know another relationship or another thing and it failed that's not how god sees it and really there's there's a lot of burdens that could be cut off right away and, and you could be set free from if we just got the right perspective. Because like you're explaining with your story is like, if I just do one more thing, if I just do it, it's about earning, it's trying to do it in your strength of like, what am I good at? And just proving that you could do it or you could get through it or, you know, you could tough it out or stick it out or whatever. That doesn't mean, even if you could do that, that doesn't mean that that's God's best for you, right? And that that's going to make you the happiest, fulfilled person, because it isn't. Right, exactly. Exactly. And even people who try, that I know who aren't Christians, are trying to leave narcissistic relationships. They struggle so hard because they're doing it out of their flesh. And any 
fear or anything like that they go back or they date even more of a narcissist absolutely the worst relationship a hundred percent several years ago um probably four years ago now one of i remember actually it was five years ago when this one lady had reached out to me she had also found me on youtube and um she was on her fourth marriage then but she didn't she didn't sign up for my counseling she didn't like my response that i gave her in an email because i told her you're likely with a narcissist and she was like no this guy isn't going to be a narcissist i was like well yeah, i'm thinking he is <laughs> and then like a year later or two years later she was on her seventh marriage and she, another narcissist and then she finally was like okay i'm ready to to do the things and so it really i can't stress enough how how important it is that you have revelation of what's happening in the spirit world because if you don't you will continuously attract this spirit and it's because it doesn't have anything to do with the nar- when you met the narcissist there were already open doors in your life you know yes. Because a lot of people don't even know that they were either raised by narcissists and so they're most comfortable when somebody is controlling them. That's their norm. They're, they don't recognize there's codependent tendencies and other things that were there prior to meeting the narcissist. They think the narcissist is the thing that like ruined their life and so they keep looking for somebody that they they wish they had instead of the narcissist or had these qualities. But you could list those qualities and still get a person who's influenced by this spirit. Um, you know, so your love bombing is going to look different and your discard is going to look different. Your devaluation is going to look different, but it's still the same category of abuse, you know? Yeah. And so it's really important that, that we educate our minds. Yes. And our, we use our brains for sure, but it's also super important that we remember that we are first spirits and we have to connect to where we came from. Cause without that connection, you're just out there like trying to look for whatever feels good or feels normal or natural to you and if that could be very much a counterfeit yeah i mean when i first met the narcissist i wasn't a narcissist but i was just as unhealthy i didn't know who i was i didn't know how to be treated i yelled and screamed and drank and did drugs like i was just as unhealthy as he was I just didn't have the same, like, I actually did love him and fell in love for those reasons, but I was just as unhealthy. And that's why I attracted him is if I was healthy and I knew what I wanted and I knew my identity, then, then I wouldn't have ever stayed for 15 years, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so once the divorce is finally finalized for you in your situation then what happens you know what is your life like now tell us about like what happened from then to now so like I said the Lord gave me this vision that it was going to be a crazy year and that I I don't need to worry this house will be mine everything will be okay and so I just stuck with that like I just held on to this truth so no matter what I saw in the out there i was like okay everything's gonna be okay everything's been okay and so let's see i was able to purchase my home so this home is mine and that's just a huge deal for me and my kids i found an amazing job that i love so i was a stay-at-home mom doing photography and i still do photography but i just found this new passion of children of teaching children and i work at a like a forest school and my boss, um, one day you prayed for me and you said, like, I hope or I pray that somebody will recognize your talents and skills and like, like val- values these things. And my boss totally does. And she pays me well and just gives me so much authority of like what I teach the children. And I was able to now support my kids and like everything's amazing actually like just having our house and having peace yeah my job my career that's amazing that is really incredible and so and and i love that you were able to like even expand because um by the way if you want to connect with milana about her photography her link is in the description of this video 
but you were even able to expand the things that you now recognized that you had a gift for because you had homeschooled your kids. Yes. And did is that right? <laughs> I did, and then they mm-hmm. went to public school because mm-hmm. it was, you know, it was too hard to try to figure out finances and money. Like once I separated our finances, I started working more, and they went to school. Um, so, yes, I guess, like I've always my my mom was a pediatrician, my grandma was a pediatrician, and my great grandma was a pediatric surgeon, and. I didn't realize how much of a passion I have for children and their mental health and working with kids until the narcissist left. And all of, like you said, once you leave the narcissist, you can start dreaming again. All of that happened. And I was able to be like, oh, like this is a passion of mine. I didn't even know. I was so busy trying to make my marriage work. I didn't even have time to work to think about those things. And as soon as he yeah. left, it all came flooding back. Like I actually have such a heart for kids and even possibly like fostering and adopting later. Like all of those things I never even allowed myself to dream about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're in survival mode when you're with a narcissist. You're just wondering what is today going to bring, right? And right. what am I going to do to do damage control on today's events? So it's really difficult to start hoping and planning and dreaming about what your life could be like. And what I love about that is, you know, it's a spiritual gift that you got fra- from your generations of being a yeah. healer. You know, you guys are all healers for children, it just in different ways. And that's incredible. And I love that. That's exactly what I mean. You were like able to expand and really embrace more about who you are, your identity your and your your passions. These are things that bring you joy and you're able to be compensated accordingly. And that is. I can't tell you how m- how much I wish people could get that revelation if you're with a narcissist or not. You should be compensated according accordingly to the value that you add to others. And it's totally possible, even for people who think that they don't have a skill or like I was just a stay-at-home mom or I only did this. You know, when you say like I only did that, you just you're you're raising yeah. an entire generation of Yes. new new people coming into our society that's a huge job that's the most rewarding job and it's also the hardest job so you know the way that you view yourself and the value that you're adding really ha- has to be viewed through the way that the creator says it is you're so right yeah i guess i always knew that value it was just that the narcissist would say you're never gonna get a job. You're never gonna go anywhere else. You're gonna be broke. You you won't be able to afford this house. And so he scared me to hope in hoping that I won't leave. And I got way more than I thought that I could do on my own. Like as soon as as soon as I let him out of my mind, all of these God brought all these good things to me. And I was even being, I was able to be a better mom for my own kids because back then I would be short with them too and yell at them too. And I, well, like, I, that's another reason I kept going back is like, well, I yell and I do these things. And as I was able to break away from him, I stopped doing all of that. And I was more present for my kids and was able to be a better stay at home mom. And now I, now with my job i can still be there for them and now i'm still homeschooling my my youngest child so amazing that's really incredible (laughs) i'm thankful i had that time to stay home with them when they were younger and and that was such a precious time for me and i know that helped them heal too like us being home together really brought us closer and now we're still really really close even though I, we can't be home with them absolutely no i love that and i think it's really important to recognize seasons and you know what stage of life everybody is in and you know it's yeah. okay that things change and shift around uh, one thing that i um 
always stress to my clients, especially if they are stay-at-home moms, is that if they're going to go through the process of divorcing um, and and they are used to doing things a certain type of way, right? Like most of them are, you know, they, they stay home, they cook meals and they do the things. And it's like, listen, your children can eat take up, take away pizza and you're, they're going to be fine. You know, you don't have to right. do all the things that you're, it's earning, you know, it, you don't even recognize because you think like, no, they have to have it and I need to be a good mom for them. But it's really just earning, trying to earn you know, acceptance and like believing that, okay, I did a good job of being a good mom to them. And this is what being a good mom looks like. But truly being a good mom means that you're providing an environment for them to grow up to who they should be, right? Who they're created to be. And so your kids can eat a, you know, packaged thing. Yes, they can. (laughs) You know, and they're going to be fine. (laughs) And it's just for a season too, you know, it's like you're going to go back to doing that. It's okay if your house doesn't get cleaned the way that you want it to, right? You have to learn to let go of some of this stuff and trust that everything is still going to work out because there's something else that you have to prioritize right now. That's exactly it. When you're a stay-at-home mom, um, you're like, well, what am I going to do? I can't leave. I'm going to have to work. They're going to have to eat packaged foods. I used to cook like bone broth organic soups for them and now I'm just like you know frozen pizza for dinner and my house is messy and who's gonna do this but actually what I realized is if I don't leave this person if I don't teach them they're gonna they're gonna fall in love with the same kind of person that yeah. they're gonna experience the same issues I did and That's that was right even more of a reason to leave is that I couldn't let my, my kids experience that. And I had to end that gen, that curse or whatever was over my family and my life. I had to do it, if not for me, for them. And that gave me a lot of strength to leave also. Yeah, I think that's incredibly brave and so empowering for people who are listening to this because I know I know a lot of stay-at-home moms feel like they're completely helpless. They don't have the resources. They don't have the knowledge. The narcissist makes all the money. They're going to get an amazing attorney. You're going to be stuck over here. And it's just all lies. It all, the root lies. of all of them is fear. Yeah. That's- and. And if there's fear there, then then you're going to be a slave to that fear because you can't you can't face it, you know. But when when you realign yourself with truth and you remember, all all they have is the smoke and mirrors. <laughs> they their only yeah. their only option is to get me to believe the smoke and mirrors are the truth and that this thing over here that I know is the truth isn't the truth. And that's right. how crazy the, the this situation is. This is a war that is really just about who has the best psyop, you know, who's going to convince you of the lie the best. And right. the narcissist will try to use all types of tactics in order to do that. Yeah. When, when you were going through all of this, um, you know, what... I know you talked about, you know, watching the YouTube videos and doing that kind of thing. Do you have anything else that you would suggest or recommend to people who are, you know, kind of wondering what to do next? You know, how did they start doing some of the steps or taking some steps like you did? Yeah, so I did those declarations for a long time. I had to get emotionally detached from what was happening when I started doing that, then it was putting on the boundaries, right? Because if anybody asks you, like, should I get a divorce? You probably aren't going to say yes. You're probably going to say, okay, we'll have to start with some boundaries first of like, figure out what is okay with you, figure out what is not acceptable, figure out what you want, what you don't want. And then start putting those boundaries in place. And that's what I started doing as you put boundaries in place for things that are for you, what God wants for you, everything starts to fade away. Unhealthy friends start to fade away. Unhealthy habits, narcissists. It's it's an all around thing. It's not just my marriage, you know, you start having better relationships with your kids. And then as you see the fruit from making those decisions, then you just keep making them. And as the narcissist sees how healthy you're getting, you know, 
they they can't handle that at least mine could and, and he left yeah and, and that made it so much that's exactly what i did and just one step at a time one little decision at a time you know i started looking for work i couldn't find work i you know that's when i when we met again like what should i do what should i do with the house you know so then we talked gave me a little bit more hope made just one step at another and you know like i said before we met like i don't feel myself fully healed i have a lot to work on but looking at myself from two years ago how reactive i was how everything he did would just completely derail me for the whole day you know i'd go into ruminating and just ruin every like my whole mood um like i'm not there anymore i i have an amazing job now i have my house me and my so my oldest is always with me she doesn't want to go to her dad so we have this amazing relationship she's growing she's flourishing i'm homeschooling my youngest daughter like step by step it's just just like anything just take that first step make a decision i'm gonna do some meditations i'm gonna do some declarations i'm gonna feed positive words into me let's just start there and then you realize that that gets you a little stronger okay then i'll put some boundary up and okay a little more a little more and and before you know it, you look back and you're like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. I can only imagine what the next year will bring. Wow, I love that. Yes, it's so it's so powerful what one little thing and the next little thing. It's like all these things really do add up and they make yeah. an incredible picture that is the life that you want to live at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Um, the words we speak over ourselves, you talk about that all the time. And mm -hmm. I even did it in this video. Like it's, it's a constant being aware of what you're saying, yeah. what kind of lies you're talking. I still have to catch myself and be like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. I just declared this lie. And now my kids sure. are doing it. Like, oh, declare that over yourself, mom. That's so <laughs> amazing. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. That that your kids are so wise. Seriously. Yeah, that's amazing that you've given and... that. Yes, you've given no. them that. That's amazing. Yeah, um so. and and just one more thing that I want to talk about really quick about what you were saying is, you know, putting up these boundaries. Um I have an entire playlist on my channel on boundaries and right. the number one comment that I get is you can't have boundaries with a narcissist. And I tell people all the time it's because you don't have a boundary you have a suggestion right. right that's right your your boundary true boundaries should come with consequences and that that's means right. for you that means okay the narcissist is going to do that i'm choosing to not do this it's not mm -hmm. a manipulation to try to get the narcissist to do something that you no. want it's saying i'm not tolerating this behavior and therefore here's the change that i'm going to make for myself the that's boundary right. has to be for you and so of exactly. course you can have boundaries you know it's yeah. just whether or not you can follow through with the consequences and i think it's important to choose something that you know you're capable of doing like you said you didn't start setting boundaries until you had enough truth built up in you of mm -hmm. who you were what god wanted for you that you had a purpose all that type of stuff like i don't know how it's going to happen but i just know that these things are resonating to me they're true to yeah. me That's and right. so one step at a time of and and that overwhelm of like if i don't know how it's gonna end i'm not gonna do it is also another thing that i get a lot like well how's it how's the whole thing gonna end how long is it gonna take how much is it gonna cost me if i if i can't you know predict all of the things then people don't take the first step but it's like this will be the outcome is predicated on that first step. You know, it's how dedicated are you going to be to that first step? And you're going to keep doing it and doing it and truly making a new pattern of behavior for yourself, not just trying to get the narcissist to do something that you want. I know it's so hard when you're in an abusive, narcissistic relationship to see that 100th floor and you think, OK, well, it's just too hard. It's so much easier to just, you know, be submissive and do what they say or be quiet 
but you just go, okay, I'm going to go on the first floor. The first floor is this boundary. And for me, I just didn't want to fight. I didn't want to be angry myself. It didn't matter if we didn't get a divorce or what happened in the future. Like today, I don't want to fight. God doesn't want me to yell. God doesn't want me to be angry and hurt. So what can I do to stop that? So we can't go out at night. We have to separate our money. And these little pieces ended up is where I am today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's amazing. So before we end, do you have anything else that you want to just share with the people who are going to watch this and see this? Anything that you just want to impart to them or give them hope for or anything like that? Yeah, I... I just want to pray and like bring God into your life. If you don't know where to start, start there. Just sit there and ask, Holy Spirit, come help me. Even if you don't believe in God, just start there and he will show you like way more than you can imagine. I can yes. imagine my life without that. Absolutely. Actually, would you would you just pray that over everybody, <laughs> Milana? Will you just release it and invite them to experience God's presence like you did? Sure. Yes. Um, uh, Holy Spirit, come. I just pray over everyone who is watching this video that they just hear the true message is that without you we truly can be healed we can't escape even if we escape the narcissist we need you to just come and fully heal us and take over and show us exactly what you would want for us and what you desire the abundance and all the amazing amazing things that you desire for us lord i pray for all these people watching that they just truly come to know you and truly just see all the goodness that you would want for them and that they would allow you to come into their life and give give strength to do what is right to to leave any abusive relationships to just just to get rid of anything dark, any dark spirits, anything evil that's over their life. I just hope that they can really let the Lord in and, to, and let and they and they they can know they don't have to do it all alone that they have God by their side. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Milana, thank you so much for being on my channel and for taking the time to be with me here and for sharing with everybody your story so authentically. I know it's going to touch so many people. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, we've included all of your links in the description of this video, so please go reach out to Milana. Milana, thank you again so much for being authentic, for sharing your story, and for spreading hope that people can get out of this situation, even if they're a stay-at-home mom, and even if this and this and this and all the other fear-based excuses that people are making for their situation. That's right. Thank you for so much for having me. Thank you again so much. You guys will be back next week. Again, please go connect with Milana to learn more about her and her story and her work. And I will see you next time.